Well, at 932 now, it's time to see what's coming out for our media partner, the Baltimore Banner. A couple of weeks ago, you might recall Michael Hughes joined us here to talk about Ouija boards. Now, he's looking at how Baltimore's Witch Board Museum chronicles the history of the Ouija board. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. So what is a witch board? I'm not familiar with this. Yeah, well, originally, this is in the late 1800s, uh, spiritualism was this big trend in America. And it was the idea that people could communicate with the dead. So people started making these boards with letters and numbers on them. And then they would use a little piece of wood called a planchette or a saucer or something, put their hands on it and move it across the board to spell out messages from the other side. So they were originally called witch boards, not because they were associated with witches, but because when people thought of witches, they thought of good luck or bad luck. So these boards could kind of like tell you things about your future as well. So the connection between witch boards and Ouija boards is it's they're close cousins. Very close cousins. As a matter of fact, uh, Ouija boards got their name in Baltimore. The company that manufactured these early boards, they didn't have a name for them. So they had a little seance with a woman who was really good at using the board. And they asked, what do you want to be called to the boards? And it's spelled out O-U-I-J-A. And then they said, what does that mean? And it's spelled out good luck. So they decided to call it a Ouija or Ouija for a good luck board. And so what sorts of things can people expect at Baltimore's Witchboard Museum? Well, the museum is a self-guided tour through the history of Ouija boards, and they were mass produced in Baltimore. So that really their home is in Baltimore. Not only did they get their name, but there were thousands, thousands of them made in factories all across Baltimore and New York, Chicago, even in England, there were companies, a uh, company that was owned in Baltimore, but that was producing these boards globally and worldwide. So when you go to that museum, you can just walk around and learn the fascinating history. And the best part of the museum is there's a little window nook with pillows and there's a Ouija board there that you can sit and you could try it out yourself if you'd like. So that's my favorite part. <laughs> and Michael, I guess it's a potato, potato, poinsettia, poinsettia, Ouija, Ouija. I mean, is there a right or a wrong? There's not a right or wrong. As a matter of fact, it used to say on the board itself, on the box, you can call it Ouija, you could call it Ouija, as long as you're having fun while you're using it. So even then, they realized people were going to call it whatever they wanted to call it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Michael. We appreciate it. And happy Halloween. Thank you. <laughs> you and if you'd like to learn more about this story or others from the Baltimore Banner, just head to thebaltimorebanner.com.